guys, what's going on in this message weekly? Whoa! The microphone, Nevosh. Well, the lucky deal got the new cable. How's the how's the bronco dilation on the big hose right now, mate? Hey, what are you thinking about? A lot of a lot of a oxygen bronco, in them bro lungs, mate. Is it all the bronco you take? It's got to be all of the cardio I've been doing. I reckon all of those morning morning and dinner dates at the Devil's Staircase, mate. Worst name we've ever heard. Massive Joe's Weekly Word Episode Seventy Six about to pop off, Nevosh. Yep. But before we get started, mate. Before we even talk about the topics of discussion, yeah, your haircut looks like someone's jizzed in it and on the head. <laughs> you've got that much <laughs> shit is on fleek. You've got that Look much. Look at it. There's that much. Zoom and focus that. action, please. You've got that much. You shit guys need there. to appreciate this shit. They don't want to see it's it. Not they want to see the Macklin Eve in the background. They do. Hold on, I need to get in your. There we go. And now pull that bitch. There it is. There it is, viewers. Looks like you just taken. Look at that shit. Looks like you're just taking a spunkin house. Well, I will face. be. I will be honest. I ran out of the Suavecito that I usually use as the soft version. Yeah. And I ran out, so I've been using the hard version. Yeah. Which has like been making my hair go like concrete. Which I That's say, why it's like pasted to my head at like the moment. The makes it look like the spunkin housing. It looks like something about Mary at the moment. But Robbie did actually hook me up via Dillop, the cutting specialist, last night because Dillop got a fresh fade. Yeah. And Robbie hooked him up with a new Suavecito. Yeah. Uh, for the big hose. He has. So as of tomorrow, shit will be back on fleek. Yeah, because you know I'm saying? saying I wouldn't be shooting with the word if I were you today. <laughs> <laughs> Topics of discussion, Neat. All right, so we're back in stock. New yep. products coming soon, Ask Neve. We're going to spend a bunch of time on Ask Neve because last week, last well not last week, last fortnight, the last episode was shit. We only had like 10 questions. Yeah. Today we've got 30 questions. 30? So, yeah, let's go. All right. First topic of discussion, Neve. Back in stock. Yep. So we've got uh, Carbolin. Yeah. Back in stock in both. Do you f quit? No. Yeah, it's not gonna f it. It's not anyway. gonna focus. You guys know what's up. You know f it, you know. All, right. All flavors, all sizes. Carbolin. There's six flavors, two sizes. My personal favorite intra workout carbohydrate of choice. No Jabal's. Finally. No Jabal's back. Also back. All flavors, all sizes, plus the all new cookies and cream that we'll tell you guys about in a second. Quest bars, cookies and cream. All flavors. And in particular, cookies and cream, because that's the one that everyone loves. Let's be honest. Yep. By far the best flavor, in my personal opinion. H EHP Labs. Strawberry Kiwi. Oxy Shred, finally. <laughs> Back in the house. You're just not having much luck with it, are you? No. No. Now it's, it's fixed on the big hoses. <laughs> uh, the hairstyle. Alright, so the Block E3 is back in by yep. ATP Science. Block E3. In the new, that's a new, a new, new, squeeze new, tube. new squeeze tube instead of that fucking bullshit and the sub pump, cut. pump action crap. So, because what happened before is the pump action is you got to the bottom and it wouldn't pump anymore. So, you used to have to cut the tub in half yeah. and use your little gooey fingers to yeah. get it out. Yeah. Whereas now, they've gone to the toothpaste. You got tube, everything. So, you can roll that bitch out. Yeah, which yeah. is as well, I just want to show you while we're at it, but we'll talk about it after. Yeah. Prototype 8 also now. In the squeeze of In the squeeze tube. It's definitely an upgrade to ATP. Yeah. Bravo, ATP. Bravo. Bravo. Keep going. No, there's only a round of applause. Okay. Uh, a, bit, a bit over the top there. I think so. Uh, you, want to, you want to stomp your feet and light a match for ATP as well, mate? Or. No. Well, I do have that. You're right, look at you, reffing them. Everything. Hey, this is now oh. ATP's weekly word, I reckon. All right, so war juice, bebe. War juice, bebe. Back! Stop. Finally! And... In the house! Dextra Pure. Do you know, when war juice is in stock, it's our behind Core Fury Extreme, our second top selling pre-workouts up. It is. I was checking the sales reports the other night. It smashes it. People well, love the war juice, I've had a lot of people man. asking when it's back in stock. Yeah. And Dextra Pure, now back in stock. Yeah, finally. That's, the, that's, the, that's my personal post-workout recovery carbohydrate source. It was like the week of carbs this past week. Well, All the carbs back coming back in, isn't it? And just finally, I will mention, it's not on our list, but it, just because it's in front of me and it was out for a little bit, Platinum Labs Anabolic Triad. And I do also have to let you guys know that the follow-up review on the actual effects of this Anabolic Triad just went live on the YouTube channel as well. Go check it. So you can go check that out. New Next products. topic of discussion, Nick. New products. Yep. No Jubal's cookies and cream. Show them. Oh, I actually do have a box. Now, I would, I, we tried these. You guys that follow TMJ in the USA would know we tried these for the first time in the US, and they are f amazing. 
they are just amazing. If you let's put, let, don't get it twisted. Noji bars take the Pepsi challenge against Quest bars any day. No, they don't. Yeah, they do, Not and they book. smash the f out of them. Not in my books. No, they do. No, nah. absolutely. The macros are completely different, but you can't really trust the macros on Quest bars anyway. Mm. At least Noji bar actually meets label claim. Quest the f numbers oh. don't even add up. Anyway, oh. Noji bars cookies. I could get sued for that. You could. I would. Damn. All right, keep going. Platinum Labs <laughs> Opti Dreams finally has made it to Australian shores. The sleep supplement. Yo, yo, you. It's not. You got it. What you got to do is you got to put it no. in. You got to. You got to go like this, right? And then you just Good. you just tease no. it. You tease it. No, 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 no. Watch, watch, watch. You tease it. You tease it. You go a bit closer. Come on, bitch. <laughs> Zoom and focus action, please. Oh. What is this? Oh, you know what Dilip's done? The funniest thing is that Massive Joe's, there's this big thing between uh, Millie, our executive assistant, who controls all of our finances, and Dilip, who wants to spend all the money. Yeah. And this is Dilip, start of Dilip's plot to get a new lens for the camera. <laughs> he said he's put the but setting, and he's gonna go to Millie, he's gonna say, lens doesn't zoom, need a new lens for the camera. But it's been like this there goes 2,000 like bucks. Day one. Unbelievable. Uh, hybrid nutrition. Yep. Activate shred. Yeah. And New I product. just want to show everyone that we actually mm. do use a product. Yeah. These is Joe's. Joe That's writes Joe's his name shreds. on. Joe writes his name on there so that I don't use them. Yeah. But I still use them. Yeah, of course you do. If you follow Neve on Snapchat, you'd already know that. Yep. That's a real cool product. It's like a. It's, it's a thermogenic, obviously, but it's really good for like sustained energy. It, it's definitely not the best fat burner we've seen thus far. Yeah. That is by far a drop factor, but for sustained energy, it's really good. We've been using it uh, just throughout the day. Just as like an yeah. afternoon pick-me-up. That's our one o'clock drop right now. It is. Yeah. Tastes disgusting. I love it. But, uh, but, but quite interesting. Anyway, raw review on that is going to drop within the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, so also oh, Prototype 8 is not a new product, but it's now in the uh, squeeze tube. Well, it is slightly new because well, they've taken because all the oily shit it's out. It's been reformulated, so yeah. it's not as oily and slimy as it once was, and it's also better absorbing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna drop something on the viewers at home that that you don't even know about, but I'm gonna tell you. You would know that I have started uh, using Prototype 8, yep. the new version, because it's not as oily and it actually absorbs into my skin, yeah. not like that old bullshit that that used to just sit on the top and make me look like a. Tripper. Yeah. Uh, I've started using Subcut, and I've also started using Block E3. Yeah. Why? Because that's your husband. No, because the viewers at home asked for raw reviews, and I've decided I'm going to come through. I don't give a f that they're all proprietary blend. I'm going to give you guys raw reviews. I don't even know that. So give me a couple of weeks on it, and within the next two, three, four weeks, we will have raw reviews on the full ATP range. You will be featuring in them. I will be. Because you have a little bit more experience well, in particular on the effects. I've been using them all for six months. Than me, and I would like to get your opinion on the effects, but there you go. You heard it here first. Yeah. ATP raw reviews. All right. Coming soon. Glycofuse orange mango. Yeah. So we've had strawberry kiwi, now orange mango joins uh, glycofuse. A lot of people oh, use- wait. What? It's focused. Boom! Watch till it walks through the door. <laughs> There's a problem with the lens. Next topic of discussion, Neve. Uh, coming soon. Yep. Uh, so, uh, also got ATP Quad RX. Yes. Which is your adrenal support. So that'll be available first in November. Okay. So start of next month. Yep. Keep going. Okay. Uh, new Team J Apparel. Cool. So this is now all dropping in uh, next week and then the start of November as well. So next week dropping are the men's muscle tanks in black and gray that you guys would have seen me wearing on Instagram over the last few weeks. Those are epic. The women's new new cotton racerbacks, lightweight cotton racerbacks for the pushy cats, which you guys would have seen Asher wearing on Instagram over the last month or so. And the long sleeve shirts that nobody has actually seen yet. They're here, we've seen them obviously, but nobody has seen them uh, published yet because they're f***ing epic and we didn't want anyone to steal our f***ing ideas. Yeah. You know how all of our competitors do that shit? They follow our social media, they see a good idea and they just f***ing copy it. Those not f***ing Anyway, those are all coming next week. Then the start of November, the uh, Generation 3 Team Massive Joe's gym bags will be in the house. Those are 
Those are amazing. I would know you haven't let me use one yet. Uh, and also the new Massive Joe's performance training towels will also be into halves. Yep. And then towards the end of November, the team Massive Joe's bro jugs. Yep. Boom. Boom. And other things as well, but that's all we're going to tell you guys about right now. All right. Uh, coming soon, core hard. Yep. So we went through all of these last weekly words. So just fly through them again. Core hard, core to MRP. Yep. Run everything labs show the world. Yep. Run everything enter with purpose. Yep. MTS clash new flavors. Yep. MTS ruckus. Yep. MTS way key lime pie. Yes. And all, all of this is happening in November. Start of November. Well, not all the start, but starting at the start and going all the way through November, all yep. of that shit is dropping. Yep. Next topic of discussion, Neve. Okay. All right, let's go. 30 questions. We're just going to fly through them. Hachi053 wants to know, dextrose versus carbolic post-workout. I know Joe uses dextrose and Neve was using carbolic. Not sure if he still does. What are the pros and cons of each? Um, I was using carbolic because I like the chocolate flavor carbolic. You did it specifically for flavor. That was specifically for flavor. So that would be the pro for carbolic, the con for carbolic? Um, I, I don't have a con over, over dextrose. Well, I'll, I, give I you, I'll give you a con. You don't get as fast glycogen replenishment as you do with dextrose. Mm. That's the pro for dextrose. The con for dextrose oh, wait, con's is negative. unflavored. Con's, con's negative, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's, dextrose, why I like dextrose. Pro- That's why I like dextrose better. Dextrose doesn't sit as heavy in my stomach. Much easier to digest. A lot easier to digest. Doesn't sit as heavy in my stomach, yeah. especially when mixing it with a, with a protein. But it's unflavored. Yeah. So that would but, be the only But problem. it makes anything taste f-ing delicious. It's Matthew sugar. Sabarin wants to know, what's up from the capital of Canada, Ontario? Just wanted to know if any of you ever had trouble walking home from the gym after leg day or as walking throughout the day after training legs. It's just my, like my legs give out as I'm walking and I just fall and look like an idiot. I feel like a horse trying to walk for the first time. Is there any reason why I can't seem to walk after leg day or is it because I'm fairly new to bodybuilding? Well, it's delayed onset of muscle soreness. And then doms, baby. I mean, and then the worst after legs. Man. I mean, I've never fallen over. I have. Okay. Yeah. Um, Especially, you know what's worse for me is when I like, well, after I've trained legs, the night after I've trained legs, when I'm like lying in bed and I get up for like my 3 a.m. piss yeah. and I like try uh, take a step out of bed and fall on the floor. Yeah. Because my knees just I thought away. the big hose would just be able to unravel when you would be able to lay there. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, uh, uh, Come on, spit it out. Oh, he's got <laughs> 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 The tripod is not in full effect at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning, different story. Oh, f- <laughs> someone, Lewis Hughes wants to know Big someone, Neve There's someone else climbing the devil's staircase You know what I'm saying Yeah <laughs> uh, Big Neve There was talk of you doing a series of raw reviews For the ATP product uh, line Can we expect this anytime soon And is there any ETA on all other outstanding raw reviews The people need content Love your work boys Keep it up well, As we just said Unless you fast forwarded to ask Neve As many people do They don't like yes. hearing that This is so, true So um, Joseph is currently using that uh, ATP range. Yeah, so most of the products, not all of them. So three to four weeks away. Yeah, and we're gonna be dropping all those raw reviews, Lewis, and Nevos will be featuring in most of them. Uh, Lee Rushworth Clays wants to know, hey guys, first let me start by saying thanks for dispatching my TMJ apparel, can't, ro- can't wait to rock it out. You're welcome, Lee, you're welcome. Question, if you could have a workout session with any music artist, who would it be, what muscle group, and why? Lee from Wigan in the United Kingdom. I don't really know why you've gone with music artist. That's a pretty that's a that's a that's a pretty easy answer for me. Well here you go, you go with Dr. Dre, wouldn't you? No, I'd go with 50 Cent because he actually lifts. You'd want to do it with someone who lifts, else it would be a shit workout. I don't care. So I'd be going with 50. Care. I'd go 50 of the game. I'd go with I just 50. Want, I just wanted to rap for me while I was working out. And uh, and I would be training upper body something, probably chest or arms. I reckon, I I reckon. video would throw down a good back workout. Yeah. Ben Savage wants to know, hey fellas, uh, wanting all your knowledge, do you know why Core Nutritionals Pump does not contain Agma Pure Agmatine? And what is the difference between Agma Pure Agmatine Sulfate and regular Agmatine Sulfate? Cheers. Well, it's just the, the, the what do they call it? A registered patented version. Patented version. Patented version. Yeah. Such as Crea Pure Creatine. Yeah. Compared to normal creatine monohydrate. The truth is, man, there's not much difference. When you're dealing with reputable companies like Core, they're going to source a very high quality agmatine sulfate. It's not going to be the patented version because it's just a waste of money. But you know that they're they're legit. They're keeping it 100. Mm. Swifty wants to know. No, Ben Savage. Oh, he's got another one. 
Well, ben Savage like. wants to know, how did that one slip through? No, no, slip no, no you have to ask me next week, mate. No, no, that's how, oh, I'm happy to answer too. <laughs> Ben's a, Ben's a long time subscriber. Are the MTS whey flavors really as good as you hear? No. Does the vanilla have a white chocolate flavor? No. When you microwave the whey with water, does it come out moist or dry like other whey proteins? We've been lying all along, it tastes like shit. <laughs> it doesn't taste like white chocolate, we've been lying. We should actually, because we have so much trouble with we should start turning yeah. people off MTS White whey. chocolate, it doesn't taste like white chocolate, it tastes like white Devils at noose. Yeah, like white dog shit. Yep. So and when you like microwave it, it goes like a brick. You no, can't even eat it. It's turns into lava because the devil made it. <laughs> now, Ben, seriously, yeah, it's amazing. If you haven't tried MTS Way, try it. You'll never go back to any other lean protein. Why ever do you think again. it's always out of stock, young Benjamin? Swifty wants to know, hey fellas, I had a question regarding carb cycling. I read the article on MassiveJoes.com, one of the best articles I've read on there. Thank you. Uh, and was wondering if Joe was incorporating any of this into his current contest prep. No, not yet. Uh, and I probably won't need to, to be honest. Oh, he's coming, or, in, he's coming in dry. He's coming, or would carbs, he's coming in dry. Or would carb cycling be more for just losing body fat and getting lean and not used for contest prep? Thanks, guys, and stay massive. Well, you've manipulated carb cycling like last prep, didn't you? Last prep I did. Look, carb cycling is like any other tool in your tool in your cutting tool bag when you're trying to cut. Uh, you should only use it when you need to use it. The only point where, where carb cycling is gonna be beneficial for, for guys is when you're consuming under about 100 grams of carbs. That can be part of a normal diet or it can be part of pre-contest. It's a tool that you can use to cut. Because I'm probably not gonna need to get anywhere near that this contest prep, I'm probably not gonna need to use that tool. I've still got a lot of calories to drop, a lot more cardio to increase. Carb cycling is like fourth or fifth down the list in my in the tools that I'm going to use to get shredded that's for like this contest e prep. That's like someone emailed me uh, last week and they said, it, or a couple of weeks ago, I reckon it was now, but they yeah. were 30% body fat. Yeah. And they said, should they give carb cycling a go? No, just uh, go in caloric deficit. Yeah, that's what I said. It's and which simple. is what Jerry just said is a, if you're at 30%, yeah. Like not being rude, but there's there's a lot that you can, obviously there's a lot of things you can improve if yeah. you're 30% body fat. The thing is, people think of carb cycling as some magical uh, cutting process is gonna get you shredded as if, if just you because hit, it's carb cycling. If you it's put just another a, tool. If you put yourself on a calorie deficit day in, day out, yeah. you're gonna lose weight. I would honestly, I would only use carb cycling if you're maximizing the amount of cardio you're doing, you're maximizing your caloric deficit through intake, so you're on like minimum calories, and you literally have nowhere else to go, and you reach a plateau, that's when I'd use carb cycling. Yeah. Matt Clark wants to know, can you overdose on beta alanine? You could overdose on everything. But are there um, any? Let's say, let's rephrase that. I, are there any I, negative side effects to taking too much beta alanine? I'm sure there is. Yeah, I wouldn't go any more than the three, than like three and a half grams. I don't know why you'd want to take more beta alanine if you're talking about using, you know, like sipping on core ABC know. every day and getting maybe ten grams throughout the day. That's not overdosing on beta you're not alanine. Not having it in one go. Yeah. I mean, but <clears> when you look at it, like how much, how much, how much beta alanine is in one scoop of? ABC is a 1.25 1. 1. 1, 1. grams. Because so, it's 2.5 yeah. grams in two scoops. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at that. I mean, if you're got, taking 10 scoops throughout the day, that's 12 and a half grams of yeah. beta alanine. So I don't, you, in one go, you probably can't overdose, but there, there's no need to take more than your recommended dosage of 3.2. Yeah, that's exactly right. Staz Shapiro wants to know if you only have 30 grams of carbs in your macros. Would you use them pre or post workout? <laughs> God I'd, damn. I need those two rice cakes pre workout. Why do you only, my question to you is, Staz, why do you only have 30 grams of carbs in your macros? That is, that's like death mode right yeah, there. I wouldn't be. I, that's, that's oh, damn. Oh, damn. I'm on like 150 grams at the moment. I feel like dog shit most of the I'm day. I'm on 350 and feel like dog shit. Look, if you, if you, were, if you were down to 30 grams, uh, the only reason you'd be down to 30 grams is if you're actually in a carb deplete, really. You shouldn't be that low, man. That's, that's, I don't even want to ask what your fat intake is because, you, yeah, you, you might be full zombie mode. Give up carbs over my bread body. But if you, let's answer the question. <laughs> yeah, that was a good, yeah, 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 that was, that was great. Uh, <laughs> um, answer the question, would you use them pre or post? 
Um, I'm having carbs pre-workout at the moment. I'd, if that, if it was that, you only had 30 grams and you want to use them either pre <laughs> or post, I'd have them pre. Because you want the a little bit of, you'd want to at least sniff a bit of carbohydrate to get a bit of to, energy. To train, yeah. Alex Holmes wants to know, I apologize about the length. Uh, that's what she said. But Dillip oh, gets that all the time, you know what I'm saying? You, as long as you got the width. Uh, but I'm struggling to find answers. I started at the gym two months ago, looking to put on muscle mass, but also needing to reduce body fat at the same damn time. I'm 6'3 and weigh 105 kilos. I'm not obese by any means, but have excess fat around my waist and gut. I'm a male slash postman, so I'm walking briskly for an average of three hours per day with 25 kilos on my back. I then train four times per week doing hit twice. I just need advice on what my time carbing slash quantity should be. As I don't know whether to take carbs in the morning because of longevity of the list, I don't, uh, or I do not want to assist in fat burning. Many thanks for the advice. It has helped me massively. Keep up the good work from England. Um, Alex, the first thing I do is I'd go to the Master Joe's website, yep. look at the free nutritional plan, put That's, in your details, yeah. what your goal is, and it will shoot out a, a, Kaylee, a, Kaylee, uh, a daily personalized calorie breakdown and also yep. a meal plan for you. Yeah. Like That's because, your first because, protocol. Because protocol. you're going to be work, walking for three hours, I definitely want to be having carbs in the morning. To give you some yeah, in I'm going to chime in here. In terms of your carb intake, it should be first thing in the morning, pre, intra, and post workout. Mm. Which is what we'll shoot out. That's what the free nutrition plan is set up to do anyway. Yeah. So that's in terms of carb timing. In terms of how much, put your details in there and it will tell you exactly how many grams. I mean, everyone's going to be di different. It's going to be, um, yeah, everyone's going to be slightly different. But it's a starting point, man. But and you have to start somewhere. Engage, you know it, from, engage it from there. Lats on lats on lats. Oh, no, we're not answering I, mean, the, the, that I just want to say the thing is, though, because you're walking for like three hours and then training as well, yeah. I mean, your carbohydrate intake is probably going to be a little bit, you could probably afford to have a little bit more than more. The average, yeah, because you're doing your caloric your output is through the roof. Dave1000 wants to know do you have to cycle T432 plus from ATP? No, you don't. Nathan Sheepy, hey fellas, I drink a Monster Zero Ultra before my fasted morning cardio. Am I still fasted? We're not getting calories in. That's a, that's a very interesting thing, though. Is yeah. Um, I actually read that I was actually listening to this on the HP podcast. Yes. And they said about uh, with like this, obviously this is getting down to the real nitty gritty. Yes. But when you're having like a pro like a product, a fat burner that has like raspberry ketones in it mm -hmm. and like and like um, sweeteners and all that kind of stuff. You're technically not fasted. You're technically not fasted that's because right. your body was breaking down those ketones rather yep. than actually breaking down your fat stores. Yeah. So it's very, very interesting thing to look but at. But the thing is, the thing is, man, is people take, it's another one of those things. People think because they do fasted cardio, it's some sort of magic <laughs> process that's yeah. going to get them more shredded if they don't do fasted cardio. When you're trying to lose body fat, I don't know how many times I have to say this, it comes down to basic thermodynamics is calories in versus calories out. If you choose to do cardio fasted in the morning because that's what fits your lifestyle, that's fine, go do it. But don't f***ing worry about the 10 calories coming from artificial sweeteners in a can of Monster that's gonna make you unfasted. It's just, it, it, you're gonna stress more about that. Your cortisol is gonna go up, it's gonna have a, a worse effect on losing body fat than actually drinking the shit and doing cardio. I think that's one thing that people do is they do they overthink. overthink things. They overthink. It is not going to make sweet all difference whether it's fasted or unfasted. It's whatever fits your lifestyle. If you if your lifestyle is I want to get up first thing in the morning, have my monster and do my cardio because that's what works for me. That's what works for you. So just go ahead and do it. Mr. Bashy1989 wants to know, hey fellas, I've just started getting into training legs twice per week. At first, the DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, mm -hmm. was not so bad, but now that I've gotten comfortable and started pushing like no tomorrow, on both days I've noticed DOMS that lead into my second leg day. I train legs on a Sunday afternoon and on a Wednesday night, so my question is, shall I push through whatever DOMS I have or back down on the weight? Uh, From I, London. We've got a lot of London, yeah. UK people. Yeah. I do what me and Joe do, Joe and I do, is hit hammies and cars one day and yep. hit a quad focus on another day. Best way to do it, man. Solves it, I mean, your DOMS problem. Yeah. I mean, when you're hitting straight up, when you're hitting quad focus, obviously if you're going to be doing squatting or leg press, you're still going to be bringing in some hamstring to some extent. Yeah. But it's not as bad as hitting like quads twice a week. Yeah. Uh, you also find if you're hitting quads like properly, properly twice a week, you're not, you're not really, hitting them properly yeah, twice a week. It's going to be week. very hard to hit them again solidly the same intensity three or four days later, which I'm guessing is what you're finding now already. 
Adam Parrish wants to know, hey lads, talking from England, another one. I'm going into my first show next year, the board short category, and do you think wearing a tight lifting belt as much as possible, do you think it keeps a tight waist or can compress your waist to come into the show with a slight tim slim waist? Well, you do. Yeah, I do. I do. The only, th the only thing that's going to make your waist come in is getting shredded, mm. is losing body fat, because your waist can be as tight as you want. If it's covered by a layer of body fat, it's not going to look tight. The main thing that wearing a tight lifting belt does is it's going to activate your transverse abdominals to push inwards rather than outwards. So mm. it's going to keep the, 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 the formation of your muscles around your core nice and tight, but you still have to get lean if you want your waist to look lean. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's it's going to help, but I mean, um, unless you're doing like your big compound, like I'd say like your weightlifting movements yeah. every day, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. That's it. I mean, if you're hitting, if you're saying they're hitting 12 and a half kilo bicep curls, you don't really need a belt for that. No. Christian Height wants to know, hey, Joe, what was your diet like in college and how did you make gains? Did you go through bulking and cutting phases? I'm currently in college majoring in systems engineering and struggle to resist cheap fast food and go on a dirty bulk is real. Thanks, guys. Uh, man, I, I did exactly what I do now. I, I've been a bro since I started in this sport 10 years ago. So I did exactly the same thing. I prepped my own meals. I went to the supermarket, found out which supermarket had the, the best value for money chicken breast, the best value for money vegetables, the best value for money sources of carbs. Did my, did my bi-weekly meal prep, so prepped on Sundays and Wednesdays. Exactly what I do now. I remember before I started. Exactly back, the same. I remember back when you were Massive Joe on your own. Yeah. You used to do the weekly cheap chicken deal and let everyone know where they were. I did, I used to post it on social media. Hmm. So that's how I did it, man. I just, yeah, I, I did exactly what I do now. Nothing's but you really used to changed. dirty bulk as well. No, I never used to dirty bulk, I used to bulk hard. I used hard. to bulk hard and, yeah. and take yeah. in a lot more excess calories. Well, back when I was in college, when I was like 19, 20, you 21, know, I used to bulk on like five to 6,000 calories a day. Yeah. If I did that now, I'd blow up like a balloon. Yeah. The thing is so, though is, um, I used to get real heavy during, but so I did used to bulk and yeah. cut really hard. But there's no use in doing that. <clears throat> it's not doing you any good. It's making no. it, it's going to make it harder to lean up. Yeah. As soon as you start, as as well, what I've seen as well is, um, and and you, I think, will also agree. Yeah. Is when you get too fat. Yeah. You, you get very estrogen dominant in certain areas as well. You do. Um, your insulin sensitivity decreases. Yep. And it will end up being harder to put muscle mass on. That's correct. If you're staying a lot leaner, your insulin sensitivity will be better. Um, so you better petition your carbohydrates a lot better. Yep. Um, as well as that, your estrogen will be a lot low, meaning a higher testosterone estrogen ratio. You're going to be able to put more muscle on. F***ing hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Professor Nebosch. <laughs> I've never, I've never heard you blurb so much scientific bullshit no, since I'm, I've known you. I'm not about to break a mental state. <laughs> Steve sucks to be you wants to know when did you and Joe have that stepbrothers moment and realize you are best friends? I think Joe hates I think me. We have it, I think we have it every day, <laughs> every morning when we see each other. We had one this morning. Yeah. Yeah, didn't we? Most mornings we had that moment. George Rayner wants to know what's your recommendation for a fat burner that you can take in the morning or during the day rather than just before you train? Uh, I have used Drop Factor by MTS before training, but find the stims to be a bit too intense to take before work. Hey, like I said before, give this a crack. Yeah, we're liking that at the moment, the hybrid activate shred. That or um, OptiBurn Amped is a good one. Core Burn Ultra is a good one. EHP Labs Oxy Shred's a good one. Anything a little bit lower in caffeine. It, well, lower in stimulants in general. Yeah. Michael Mathis wants to know, would you both say that your favorite pre-workout subs are Core Fury and Core Pump? Is Steve still MTS Clash? Just seeing which one I really want to try first. Um, I think, yeah, definitely my, my favorite all time is Core Fury. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely more than MTS Clash, just because lately I've been exhausted, but like we've obviously, because our workload has increased, yeah. um, I'm feeling pretty sluggish by sort of six o'clock. And, yeah. and as Joe would have noticed, sometimes I don't get up, my, get up from my desk to train that easily. Yeah. So that's why I feel like I need the, a bit heavier stim lately, which is yeah. where Core Fury comes in. Lately, I've been training on 
I've been training on whatever is the new pre-workout on the market at the moment. We always try new shit, so but I've been like I've been trying Kai Green's new stuff for the review. I tried um, CT Fletcher's. Mm. I've tried Dana Lynn Bailey's. I keep trying these new stuff because I try them before I shoot raw reviews for you guys. Hashtag People's Company. But I keep coming back to Core Fury plus Core Pump. I, I use that one. at the moment. That is my all-time favorite that, that is going to blow if you if you're thinking about a pre-workout stack to try get the extreme pump stack core fury extreme plus core pump it'll blow your f- mind the four products we've been using lately are war juice yep angel dust yep kai green stack yep and dlb stack yeah but the only one tub i have open in my gym bag yeah is core fury uh, i'm core exactly fury. exactly the same that's mm. i got a, a tub of fury and a tub of pump x legendary pitches wants to know what's up mother I've been dealing with mobility problems regarding my left shoulder. It becomes especially apparent when I hit a back double by and can't pull my left shoulder back properly. Damn. What kind of mobility work can you recommend for me to improve the health and mobility of my deltoids? A lot of, uh, what are they called? What's the little muscle called? Rotator uh, cuff? Yes. Rotator cuff mobility. Yeah, I mean, some just, of these bitches. As well as, I mean, if you're trying bitches. to get back, I mean, I'm, I'm real tight through my chest. Yeah. So I mean, that's what, if you can't get back, maybe you just might be a bit tight through your, through your delts and your chest. Rotator well. cuff, yeah. So rotator cuff and, and just stretching through your delts and all that kind of shit. Otherwise, if you are having a problem and it is actually affecting the way you train, probably actually do speak to a physio. Freddie Matthias wants to know, what's up, mother that's my intro to periscope these guys must watch us on periscope can you guys do a video of what supplements to take from pre intra post workouts during a cutting and bulking phase it would be awesome to have an idea of what supplements to take thanks and stay massive bitches freddie i just want to say if you go to the massive joe's website and look at the free supplement plan it's all there man look at what uh you put in what goal you want to do so you obviously yep. increase muscle or fat loss yep. and you'll see what supplements we take we all use the same subs you know because it's all we talk about in the in videos. The videos yeah so if you go there it'll tell you what we actually do use the three main supplements to use and the two accessory like two yeah, add on. And it's, it's, it's a great free tool, man. It's awesome. Poncho Gonzalez wants to know is what exercises can develop my biceps. I just want, I just want to say peak. one thing. If you, or if you do check out mine and Joe's Snapchat, Joe's especially, yeah. you'll see what subs he's using at any given time during what phase he's in as well. That's it. Poncho Gonzalez, what exercises can develop my biceps peak? Uh, the, lately you've been doing the old stretch bicep curls for your peak, haven't yeah. you? The thing with biceps peak, hit a front double bicep for me. When you see it from the front, if you know the bicep has a short and a long head, get some zoom focus, come a bit closer. I'm about, I'm about to go balls deep in this. When you hit a front double biceps from the front, this muscle here, you can see the split in knee boss because he's lean as f- right now. Getting lean as f-. This right here is short biceps head and you can see that that finishes about where, where, where my finger is going. Behind that is the long biceps head. So the long biceps head is what actually gives you the peak. And when you hit it, turn around, hit it from the back, can you actually hit it from the back? When you hit it from the back, the only thing you see is long biceps head. You don't see the short at all because it's tucked underneath on the, on the inside of the biceps. So to work on biceps peak, you need to be hitting bicep exercises that specifically target or involve the majority of stimulation for the long, long head of the biceps. The best way to do that is to do bicep curls where your elbows are behind your torso. So if you think about most people when they do bicep curls, man, is if they're doing like a barbell bicep curl, it'll be, if you look at where my elbows are, it's in front of my torso. If they're doing like dumbbell curls, it's on the side of the torso. The only way to actually get your elbows behind your torso and hit long biceps head is to pull them back like this and curl from that position. You can see that, how my elbows are behind my torso. So the the two main exercises to do that and hit the long biceps head for maximum biceps peak are incline dumbbell curls and standing cable curls where the cables are pulled back and then pulling your arms back behind your body. If you use the low cables, Boom. you've got the ones that are pretty close together rather than your big wide ones. The two That's ones it. are a bit close together. Nick Drummond wants to know, do you think that if I paired with a good bro diet and a six day a week hypertrophy style regimen, would the magic fat burner pills, could you get good results? I'm personally like Joe and always being hungry, but I've never been under 200 pounds, it's about 90 kilos, uh, I, since I started playing American football in middle school. Yeah, if you, if you follow a set diet and 
Yeah. That's the whole thing, man. I don't, I don't That's know. like, you've just I mean, given not, the blueprint for how to get gains. I mean, you're not going to follow your shit diet and train twice a week and a fat burner pill is not going to do anything for you. That's it. As, as we've always said, it's supplements. If your diet is shit, if you They're called supplements, not substitutes. If, if your diet is shit, if, you, if you're training shit, I mean, you can spend 500 bucks a week on supplements and you can get absolutely nowhere. That's why a guy came before and he said, what else do I need to put five kilos on? Yeah. And I said, well, I can, sell you, I can sell you $400 worth of supplements, but if you're not actually putting yourself in a calorie surplus, there's no use, you're just going to waste all your money. Dungeon C wants to know, uh, I broke my big toe, I dropped 140 pounds on that bitch. As such, it's tough to train legs, no doubt. It's probably tough to walk as well, man. I've been doing my best to crush the V-squat over the regular back squat because the pain is mostly manageable when doing so. Any advice on injured leg training? Um... I don't know if it helps, but putting like a plate under your toes and squatting that way to put more stress through your heels. Yeah, if you've got a broken toe though, but brother. It's very hard. You just gotta let that shit heal. Pretty much the only thing you can do is hamstring curls and leg extensions. Yeah. Because you're not gonna be able to stabilize on your foot until your until your toe is fixed. I mean, uh, another thing I, I'd do would be to do like the the plate um, the plate horizontal leg press. If you put your toes off the top of it. Yeah, take toes. the pressure off your toes. Just Last right. three questions. Brandon Hibbs wants to know, hey, Neve, what's up with it? I had a belt shaker and TMJ, TMJ basketball jersey signed by the TMJ crew, and yet on everything, all you have ever written is hashtag Neve movement. Last week, my mate bought a belt, asked for it to be signed, and you put your actual signature on it, not just hashtag Neve movement. Please explain. If you see my signature, which you obviously have, Brandon. It looks like a uh, four-year-old child has written S Mills. It is like this, S-M-I-L-L-S. <laughs> if <laughs> is, not, is nothing, so if a I hashtag got- Hashtag Neve movement is a far better signature. So you, if, you got so the I, good end so of so that So if I go movement. around going like this on everyone's thing, it doesn't actually look like I've actually done it. Anything. Looks it looks like looks, a scribble. It looks like someone's fucking stuck a pen in the end of their dick and <laughs> on a shaker. Hayden McCauley wants to know, are you planning a trip to Mildura in the near future? I would lock up the missus, the pushy cat, please Hayden, and drive 70 uh, kilometers dirt driveway to be there and meet, train, learn with the Neve of the Neves. Oh, I'll never be in Mildura. There's no plans to go to Mildura anytime soon, Hayden, but we're in Adelaide and it's only like a five hour drive, so if lock you, up the you, pushy cat. Better yet, bring the pushy cat with you. If you want to- Come say hi. Once a month, Hayden, we do common trains. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you're going to be in Adelaide on one of those weekends, come yeah. down there and you can come train with the whole gang. That's it. Barney Ong. Oh, Barnard. The last question from young Barnard. Barney the purple dinosaur. Barney the dinosaur. In older videos of Kai Green, he does cardio in a hoodie, even in the summer, as he explains that this is to increase his thermogenesis in order to burn more calories. What are your thoughts on this? I know the only cardio Nevos does is walking from his desk to the quest bar stand, <laughs> but as far as I can tell, Joe the Devil Staircase, Joe does the Devil Staircase topless. Or is this to get more Periscope viewers? Oh, I forget the Periscope viewers. But from what I've read, young Barnard, is um, I mean, when your body is cooler, your body actually has to work harder to keep yourself warm and regulate your body temperature. Ex I was just about to say the exact same thing. It's completely opposite to what Kai Green does. The best cardio to do is when it's absolutely freezing, completely naked. Because your body has to warm up. That's gonna increase thermogenesis. The hotter and sweatier you are, you are the, your body has to work less hard to increase thermogenesis because you're already hot and sweaty. And your body, like, obviously when, when you're cold, your body warms up and you sweat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when, uh, when when you're hot and sweaty, your body yeah. is trying to cool itself down, obviously. But I mean, you see a lot of boxers and fighters and stuff will, will wear go saunas, wear a jumper, wear plastic bags to make them sort of sweat to drop water weight. But That's it. It's not actually increasing their fat burning, it's yeah. just dropping water weight. Yeah. The reason why I do it topless on the Devil's Staircase is because I'm doing it in my house so I can train naked if I want to. And I don't like the feeling of, of sweating in clothes. Yeah. So I just prefer to like just sweat it and let the sweat sweat dry and to help keep me cool. That's why you sweat. You sweat to keep your body cool. To be honest, when so. I'm doing cardio, when I have done cardio before a couple of times in my life. Yeah. How was that? Not Horrible really. experience, wasn't I, it? I, I, like last you Sunday, could write a book, last, mate. Su last Sunday, I took my dog for a walk and it was it was about 10 a.m. So it was starting to get a bit hot and I wore my Team Master Joe's hoodie. Next minute. It was that hot and sweaty, it was that uncomfortable. I hated it. Unbelievable. Nevos, 
Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. Before I tell the viewers to hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, man. Stay up to date with all the latest editions of Massive Joe's Weekly Word and all the other deliciousness in our YouTube channel. We're taking questions for us, Neve. We're completely out. Got through 30 today. It's a blank canvas. The, the slate has been wiped clean. Yeah. We'll catch you guys next week. Where are we coming to it from, Neve? Massivejoe's.com. Stay mad.